Good evening. I'm Calvin Samuel, Methodist Minister for the towns of Rochford and Rayleigh in the county of Essex. I'm looking forward to taking on responsibility for the town of Hockley from next week. Welcome to Covenant Community Online Evening Prayer. We are internationally dispersed, we continue to be socially distant, and we continue to come together in worship as a covenant community. Evening prayers tonight are, as usual, drawn from the Methodist worship book. You won't need a copy, but please do join me in the words of the liturgy when they come up on your screen in yellow, or if you are listening via audio and working with a transcript, the words in bold type. As usual, I'll be breaking my 24-hour Tuesday fast immediately following tonight's evening prayers. Thank you to those of you who were able to join me in fasting today. So let's quiet our hearts and minds now as we prepare to come before the Lord in prayer. Be swift, O God, to save us. Come quickly, Lord, to help us. From the rising of the sun to its setting, may the Lord's name be praised. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. Loving God, you have searched us and known us, our blindness, our frailties, our fears, and our selfishness. In sorrow, we confess that we have sinned against you and disobeyed your command to love. Forgive us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who became like us, that we might become like him. Amen. In silence, we bring more personal confessions to God. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Thanks be to God. God and Father of all, as this day ends, we offer up its hours in praise to you. As we take our rest, unite us by your Spirit in praise of Christ our Lord, the Alpha and Omega, the first and last, in whom we make our prayer. Amen. Our Psalms for tonight are Psalm 127 and 128. Uh, like last week, these are two Psalms that are meant to be read together, uh, and the one Psalm helps you to reflect upon and to understand the other. Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, the guard keeps watch in vain. It is vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for God gives sleep to his beloved. Sons are indeed a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the sons of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies at the gate. Psalm 128 Happy is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of the labor of your hands. You shall be happy, and it shall go well with you. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. 
may you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. Amen. Our New Testament lesson comes from the Gospel according to Mark, reading from chapter 7, from verse 1. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around him, they noticed that some of Jesus' disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the traditions of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. Sounds very COVID friendly, doesn't it? And there were many other traditions that they observed, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked Jesus, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? Jesus said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites. As it is written, This people honour me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then Jesus said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in, either, in order to keep your tradition. For Moses said, Honour your father and your mother, and whoever speaks evil of father or mother must surely die. But you say, that if anyone tells father or mother, whatever support you might have had from me is korban, that is, an offering to God, then you no longer permit doing anything for a father or mother, thus making void the word of God through your tradition that you have handed on. And you do many things like this. Then Jesus called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. When Jesus had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciple asked him about the parable. He said to them, Then do you also fail to understand? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile, since it enters not the heart, but the stomach, and goes out into the sewer? Thus he declared all foods clean. And Jesus said, It is what comes out of a person that defiles. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now say the Nunc Dimittis. Now, Lord, let your servant go in peace, your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. We come now to our prayers of intercession. If you're watching this live with me here on YouTube, I invite you to add your prayers to the chat section uh, here on YouTube. If you're watching this later on, uh, the chat section will be disabled, but please do feel free to add your prayers to the comment section below. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace that is from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world and for the life and unity of the church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may worship God in spirit and in truth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all ministers of the church 
and the whole company of God's people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the governments and peoples of the nations, as we seek to continue to minimize the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic and the pandemic of racial injustice, may we seek justice and peace for all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our own country and local community, as we learn both of the challenges and blessings of social isolation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick, the afflicted, for prisoners, for those especially at risk, especially those whose broken relationships mean that this pandemic is even more challenging. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for ourselves, that we may truly serve him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That with all who have served God and are now at rest, we may enter into the fullness of unending joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In silence we bring more personal intercessions before God. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us, bringing all our prayers together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Heal us, O God, from all our afflictions, and keep us steadfast in your love. Bind up our wounds, raise us from death, and lead us to fullness of life through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. We will lie down in peace and take our rest, for you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. May the souls of the faithful, through the mercy of God, rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Thank you so very much for joining me for evening prayers tonight and a particular thank you to those of you who were able to join me for Tuesday fast earlier today. I do hope you enjoy your evening meal when you come to it. If you've not yet uh, experimented with Tuesday fast, it's a very simple thing. Uh, I have an evening meal on a Monday, I don't have breakfast or lunch on a Tuesday so that by the time I come to an evening meal after evening prayer on a Tuesday night, it's roughly 24 hours or so since the last meal. And in that 24 hour period, you've given yourself some space uh, to pray. So when you're not eating breakfast or preparing breakfast or eating lunch or preparing lunch, you've got some additional time in your day. Uh, and that gives you some time to pray. But much more important than the prayers that we might say, uh, we situate ourselves in a position where we might just be open to what God might want to say to us uh, about ourselves, about our families, about our future. Uh, 
about what God might want to say to the churches. So I want to invite you, if you haven't done this yet, uh, to try Tuesday Fast with me. If tonight's been a blessing to you, please, please do feel free to share this video with your friends and family using whatever uh, social media platforms you already use, WhatsApp, Facebook, whatever it is. Uh, and as you share, what you're really doing is inviting people to be part of our covenant community. It's a way of sharing a little bit of our Christian faith. So if you haven't yet shared any of these videos with your friends, uh, think about someone in your family, in your friendship network that you might want to say, look, have a look at this, it might just be uh, helpful to you. Uh, and if you share and like the video, it certainly, through the YouTube algorithms, makes it a little more uh, easy to be found. If you're an early riser, you might like to join me this week for Prayer for the Day on BBC Radio 4. It is early, 5.43 a.m., and it'll be broadcast from Saturday the 22nd of August through to Friday the 28th of August with the exception of Sunday which is given over to Sunday worship. So if you are awake at 5.43 in the morning, which is summertime, you might like to join me then. And if you're like me and you're really sensible and you're not awake at that time, uh, you can certainly catch it on iPlayer or BBC Sounds at a more reasonable time. I'll be back next week Sunday. Uh, I'll be preaching next Sunday as we come to our final sermon in phase three of our series into the book of Acts. I'll continue to be working with our colleagues. Uh, Colin Turner will be leading the service uh, on Sunday and so I look forward to seeing you then and of course I'm back next week Tuesday for evening prayer 7 p.m British summer time so I shall see you then. God bless you.